One thing we can do for that is, once again, we're going to need a little bit more power for this again, but have this right there. Have a liquid thermo sensor. We may as well do it after the, this tank, because that will drop the, the ambient temperature of the tr tank as we go. Uh, that being said, I could have it before it. Um, no, I'd actually like to pull it out bef uh, afterwards, so the whole tank will be, be subject to this cooling, if it's necessary. And we have that come across like so. Now I'm going to need to break this in two places. One there. One there. Now this water is going up there to my bristle blossoms, which is grand. Let's pop that in there. This in there. And we will have this come all the way across and connect up like that. Now the, what I'm going to be doing here is if this is above a certain temperature, let's say... Let's say uh, 25. Uh, sure. Uh, we could say if it's above 25 degrees, uh, then I want to run it through here. Though, honestly, I'd probably say it, it, this would be better for something like above 27, because I don't mind if, if this place gets a, a little bit toastier. Mm, I don't know. Maybe even say if it's above 20 degrees. Because I'd rather temperature control this area to be closer to the 20s rather than closer to the 30s. And at that point, it'll drift out here and back into the system. Now, because of the way we've got the bridge there, this will get priority. So this whole system will back up and stop running, unfortunately, should that be the case. Now, there is a, a, a way that we can solve that. Uh, ooh, actually, yeah, there is, there is another way that we can do this as well. If I cancel that... And we have another liquid reservoir, just down here, set to be an output point for for this, so that that effectively all of this will sit in this this liquid reservoir tank and flow through. In fact, at that point, we don't even need this. So uh, I'm going to deconstruct that as well, and we're going to set all of this up to priority sevens. Let's get that done. There we go. Now, I would like all of this to enter this liquid tank. About there, I'm going to say. This should allow the tank to, to store any overflow. Uh, hmm. If we use directional bridges still, then I can just have this flow a little bit better. Because um, ultimately I do want it to flow a bit better. Let's cancel that then. We'll also deconstruct this part. I'm going to have this flow... Um, I want this to enter the bridge. Uh, sorry, this to, to come across and this to bridge in. So that this liquid has a lower priority. Yeah, I think that, that would probably be the best way. This way, the, the liquid always flows. Ultimately, this tank, the, the cooling loop, could be, be emptied of any coolant, which isn't exactly a good thing. But it should work okay. We'll see. Could you please disconnect that liquid pipe? Right there. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we are. And as soon as the rest of that is done, we should be good. Now I can have this flowing across. And again, that means that this liquid is going to get priority. So if this is too hot, it just gets flushed back into the system straight away. It doesn't have to stop anyway. But having this liquid tank here means that whilst that's emptying out over hot liquid, the chilled liquid that's currently moving through my base, the coolant, will still have a place to go. So this, this pipe will still run. And the moment there's a gap then, It'll start feeding back out. I think that's probably a wise move. Just put that up there. This place is looking great, but it could be more amazing. Uh, yes, I actually do agree with that. Uh, that is that is probably going to be true of most of the uh, the stuff I'm working on, actually. Right, now, I would like this, if this is above 20 degrees, 
And I want this to turn on and start dumping that uh, that out in this direction. Uh, we also need one more pipe section. Just connecting that up there. That actually now needs to be a massive priority because all of this is basically just being stored in the tank. It's not quite what I wanted. Oh, isn't that an interesting phys uh, physics weirdness? All right. But well, we've already done nine batches of copper, refined copper, which is actually pretty cool. Now, while all of that's going on, over here, we should be good to set this all back up. Yeah. And with that, I think we're now ready to go pomp. Now, currently, the current temperature is way too high. It's just shy of 30, which is not good, because once it's over 30, that's going to stop growing. But there we are. This water is now being dumped back into the system. Only water, which is... Oh, well, actually, sometimes it's not managing it. And that is because this water is backed up a little bit. You're going to have the odd packets of uh, overhot water, unfortunately. That's a bit of a shame, but... Now, why is that stopping? Ah... This is this is unable to empty. All right. Well, we can we know how to fix that. So let's uh, remove that right now because I would rather stop any over hot water getting through if we can avoid it. So let's get that sorted, and instead bring that back out, and then link that down like so. Once that's done we will have this system ready to, to work properly. It'll only uh, evacuate the pipe section here when there's room for it. Now, if I really, really wanted to make sure that this could run for as long as it possibly could before having to stop, I would put another tank here, but I think that's a little bit overboard. As you can see, this tank is pretty much emptied completely, uh, but now we're getting much colder liquid flowing into the system. Some of it is uh, running this way, but, uh, you know, it's generally moving in the right direction. Right, now the system should should uh, get back to, to uh, playing the right way. Now, why is this not running? Because that should. Oh, it's above 30. And then run, because I don't want to cool it too aggressively but that's the problem is it's, it's never gonna gonna get properly chilled um all right then at this point i'll say 25 because that that'll pull it down to almost 10 degrees oh well depending on the heat of the water going in Now, the liquid leaving here is only at uh, 29 degrees, but we should be able to get this system properly working relatively soon. Now that we've got everything flowing the way it needs to, this will eventually uh, sort itself out to a certain degree. Now, what I can do to try and improve this is to top up the system, because there's now two tanks that can hold liquids in it, and so there's going to be gaps in the coolant, which is not great. And In fact... This whole area over here is going to absorb some of that, which is not great either. Uh, could you please go ahead and mop all that up? So, I'm thinking we're going to want to siphon off some of this. Um, the best way to do that... Uh, let's see. I've got the pump here. What did I hook this up to? Ah, that's whether this one was full or not. Right, okay. Um, see, the problem here is trying to get this out of this whole system in an intelligent way. Uh, the alternative is I could run the pipe from over there, I guess. But I or simply put, I could have a little bridge hooking up up there so that uh, they will fill this system up with toilet water for a little while. That might not be a bad idea, actually.
That might not be a bad idea. Because this water is now, generally speaking, not terrible. I mean, it's quite warm there, but that takes a low priority compared to the rest of it. Yeah, we definitely need to fill this back up because it's not going to fill itself back up. But um, one way we can do that is uh, automatically, if we particularly wanted to, because these are uh, these do output certain um, information. So we could say if this is fifty percent full. Uh, let's see. Uh, sends a red signal when the reservoir is 50% full. Until then, uh, until it is less than zero. Now we want it to be... Send a red, red signal when it's 80% full until it's less than 65% full. So this should be sending a green signal now. Send a green signal when the reservoir is less than 65% uh, full until it's 80% full. And if we have some sort of uh, a lock somewhere around here, for example, that will siphon this out and just add it back into this. I mean, that's going to be a long, long, long running line, though, which is kind of the problem. Might be better to have this reservoir further down. The output reservoir somewhere around here instead, for that reason. Because it would be closer to this point. But, uh, you know what? Running an automation wire, it's not like we, we haven't got stupid amounts of copper now. So, I guess it wouldn't be the worst. Let's run that automation wire all the way along. Potentially, I might use this to hook up into other forms of automation as well. Uh, now, this is going to need to be on this side. Right there. Now, unfortunately, because of the flow of this, I'm going to want to make sure that this liquid only ever goes in this direction once it gets here. Uh, we're going to want a liquid shutoff. Right there. And at this point, then, if ever there is some change to the system, it will add back in. I'm going to put another another liquid bridge just to make sure that it's got the right direction going on there. This all needs to be done. Well, actually, you know what? It's a six. they will probably get it done fairly quickly. Cool AF, man. Thank you very much for the tier one subscription there, mate. Diochen Vaur. Hello, little bird. Hope work is going well. But yeah, at this point, uh, once this is fully set up, then we will have an automated way of topping back up the coolant loop. Which will be quite uh, quite well received, honestly. I'd be very happy with that. So whenever this is not is uh, greater than 80% full, we'll stop accepting any more top up. But the moment it drops below 65%, we'll request more. We'll give it a priority on the uh, polluted liquid output. Now, the problem here is this will realistically never empty at this state. This will always be there. Which is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Well, I'm starting to think that maybe I would need another liquid tank just to keep this flowing. Because if I don't have any breaks in this uh, in this flow, which is what I'm trying to get to, so this flow is more or less continuous. Like what we've what we've got here, we've got an infinite loop effectively. This is 24 degree water, and this is saying if it is probably um, yeah, we this is the wrong way around. This needs to be 25, and the other one needs to be 20. If it's above 25. Well, no, then that, that would never work. Maybe these both just need to be at the same amount. Because once the liquid is like 
it would not satisfy it would never get colder and it would never satisfy this so it would always be flowing through um so basically i just made a complete logical hiccup there or rather silly of me really um at this stage of having that that second reservoir I need this never to back up. I always need this to move if it wants to. Uh, what I could do to achieve that is to hook these up, remove that, and have a liquid bridge bridging across. So the coolant over here will stop in the pipes sometimes just to allow overhot material to go back into the system. But that would allow me to have this kind of staggered a little bit down here and just have this connect straight in without messing everything up. Honestly, you know, this is why you don't want your main coolant loop running other things because uh, now there's conflicts of priority. I want both things done basically at the same priority, but I never want there to be any kind of uh, halt in the system. And that's hard to orchestrate. But that should... Um, it's very messy because I've just been adding and adding to the system to try and get it to do what I want, and there wasn't really much reason to, which is a bit silly, but... Oh, well. It is done now. Uh, I may as well remove that. And this as well. And this will just flow where it needs to flow. So, this is now cool. And when it isn't, it will get priority moving into here. Which is kind of where I want it to be. There we go. And that should allow us to just con continuously make more refined copper. It's a hopefully over engineered system. But, you know, it's getting there. Right, temperature in here, it's not great, honestly. But it'll get there. Once we've got more of this liquid moving through, let's see what the temperature of the liquid is getting in here. Okay, it's uh, entering at 23. By this point, 23. Up here, it's getting much, much warmer. 24, so it's increased by about a... Yeah, it's increased by a degree from moving through this area. Oh, actually, that, that stuff was quite warm. Interesting. Let's have a look at this. This is all 25. Okay. Ah, it's because it's failing to bridge across there. So some of the hotter liquid is getting through. Again, it, it's, the, it's the priority of travel. These two lanes have exactly the same priority to get onto this one. If I want to make sure that if it's too hot, it can never go into this loop, then I need to give this lane a much, much higher priority over getting there. Um, so, that can simply be achieved by having this bridge straight back across. And then having this bridge in like that. So, you know what? I don't even need that. I just need to change the orientation of this one. Uh, it's going to cause a little bit of a mess up for a few seconds, but then, you know, we're used to that at this point. As soon as I get that done. There we go. Let's make these seven so that they get it done ultra fast. But that'll give priority to any water that, it, that doesn't meet the criteria of moving through this. So it's, it's too hot. It'll go up here. It'll block this water from exiting in that case. But that's fine. Ultimately, I just want to make sure that only cool water goes through here. I mean, 30 degree water isn't so bad that I need to worry about it over much, but, you know, it's bad enough, I guess. All right, let's have a look at the uh, setup here. Yep, that's all showing correct. Let's have a look down here. The next point where the shift allows bathroom breaks, we should see a flood of new polluted water entering the system around there. 
Eureka, my duplicates have discovered computing technology. New buildings have become available. That's quite nice. And at that point, I don't think we're going to be uh, worrying about it anymore. Now, we're still hitting the problem where this area... This is not dumping into this fast enough to, to get this uh, to a steady temperature. There we go. Eventually, this is going to back up. But sooner or later, that will start filling. Let's come down here to a mixture of 26 and 40. There we go. So some of it needs to be siphoned back through the system. Some of it does not. Um, it might even be better to have that, that check down here, frankly. Just push it back into the system straight away. But then you'd have that clog up down here. No matter where you put it, there's going to be a clog. I'm just allowing it to travel quite far before it decides where it wants to go. Uh, which isn't the smartest move, but I already had some of the infrastructure up here, and it's closer to the power anyway, so uh, it isn't isn't necessarily the worst thing to do. But yeah, that I could have had that break off anyway. Um, breaking it off before it goes back through this would have been a wise move, because some of the polluted water is going to get up here and go. it's going to continually increase in temperature, and eventually there's a potential that it will break the pipe. We'll see. We'll see. It's a temporary setup, but uh, I feel I have already wasted quite a lot of time on that now. Came to see it. Watch Avoclay Oni. Stayed for the lesson in fluid dynamics. Uh, I hope I hope you're not talking about the way that I'm taking care of this, because I am the worst person to watch. There's a mod with tanks with multiple in and out ports. That would actually be quite, quite useful, yeah. That would be very useful. All right, can I copy these settings over now that I've uh, got more room for plants? Because these Dracos are going to die eventually. We don't get them cold. Hopefully we can do that. But there we go. We can see the uh, water being input into the system. Quite a decent amount of it is quite warm. But, you know, it'll leach off the temperature in this area. The tile is 39 degrees, so as long as it's colder than 39 degrees, it's going to start improving the situation. But we really need this area to be colder than 30 degrees, or as hot as 30 degrees at maximum for this to, to work out for us. We'll see. We will see. Hopefully we can get that system running properly before too long. There's some very nice and chill uh, water there going into the, into the base. As you can see, the base is now actually a very comfortable temperature. Extremely happy with that. We're having a bit of temperature bleed at the manual airlock, but that's to be expected. All right. Okay. So exosuit dock time. I'm going to need two units of reed fiber. I've only got one. I'm going to need copper. I've got enough for three suits. But I do not have the reed fiber for three suits. So hopefully we can hook this up and get that happening. Now, let's uh, run this across. We just need 60... Uh, 60 energy in there. Now, uh, do you want to see how, how you can basically game the system to have incubators working at a fraction of the energy requirement? Because normally they would pull 240, but you can get that down to, uh, like, a stupidly low amount. Instead of 240 per second, you can drop it to, like, 240 for a few seconds once a day. Uh, what if I checked the water temperature down by the cooler and just dumped the water that's over hot? Well, I mean, the system would slowly bleed water, but that's not necessarily the worst thing, especially if I have a system to pull that water back into the 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 loop. Hmm. It's not a bad idea, actually. It's not a terrible idea. I may have a look at that uh, in a moment. I may have a look at it. Right, we're starting to see things get a little bit better down here. Uh, what's the yellow stuff in the water? Yeah, pollution. I mean, it's polluted water. It's a catch-all. Any, any kind of pollution. But yes, yeah, some of that pollution is weak. 
Some of it is pollutants pulled out of the air by a carbon skimmer, so CO2. Soot and other such detrius. Now, the thing down here is you always want a maximum packet to move through the Aqua Tuna. Because if the Aqua Tuna should ever activate, it doesn't matter how big a packet of liquid it is, it will use the full um, the full amount of, of liquid to go through it. Um, uh, sorry, the, the full amount of power to cool down that liquid, whether it's 10 grams or 10 kilos of water. So you always want it to be a full packet. What I could do is have two aqua tuners set up so that uh, if it exits this one, not warm, not cold enough, it just goes through another and then and cycles into the system. A double aqua tuner setup is not necessarily energy, uh, less energy efficient because it's going to have to run to cool it down, whether it runs the same aqua tuner twice or two aqua tuners once, but it is very. Uh, very material inefficient. Because these are expensive things to, uh, to build. I could build one, though. If I were to set up another Aqua Tuna here, for example. Switch it around. Get another liquid pipe thermosensor. Something like this. Um, which one would I give priority to, though? Is the question. Because I'd have to give priority to one of them. The output of this... Aqua Tuna or the output of the other? Uh, probably this one would have to get the priority, um, realistically speaking. So, we would need to have this here, I would say. Let's do something like that. Once again, we want the output from the Aqua Tuna to get priority over the water that is just, you know, it's sufficiently cool. Uh, actually, we can do this in a much, much smarter way. Let me cancel this. It's going to require that I need to rejig this area, but effectively, we want this liquid to get add it into this liquid up here. So a bridge there would do. Then we want this to get priority over this one, so we want a bridge there as well. The overflow should wait for the output of the Aqua Tuna, because we never want the overflow to get priority. Uh, because it, if something can't move into the overflow position, it'll just get pushed through the Aqua Tuna. Or not, because the Aqua Tuna won't even turn on in that case. Um, so things will eventually clear so the overflow can exit. But we always want... If, if liquid needs cooling, I don't want it to get shunted into the overflow because there wasn't enough room to go through the Aqua Tuna. That's generally the way I want it to, to run. So I always want the output of the Aqua Tuna to have room enough to leave. So this should come up there. Deconstruct that. Connect this up. Uh, well, actually, we'll deconstruct this and this. We'll have that lift up across. 
It's a bit of a hodgepodge, but uh, it should work. I, I, I say with failing confidence. This will then exist there. This pipe will just have to move up. There we go. And this should now give priority to the liquids in the right order. It is a mess. I know. I know. It, it makes my eyes bleed a little bit as well. You'll just have to bear with me, chat. I, what? Ugh. I do hate it when I'm in this mode and I can't click on a pipe to, to copy it. But oh well. It'll work for now. Uh, let's come out of that. Set this up properly. I want this right there. I'm going to need some copper running across. And I'm definitely going to need some ladders. Right, I need this done relatively fast because I'm about to shut down all cooling in the base.